Hi guys, welcome back to the channel Spare Parts, and today I'll be reviewing set number 76124, The War Machine Buster. The set came out in the year 2019, comes with 362 pieces and 4 minifigures. This is a set that came out alongside with the Avengers Endgame wave, I think that was in 2019. And it was kind of a weird wave, they just sort of released a bunch of random sets that weren't really in the movies, just so they, because they didn't want to spoil anything about Endgame, so... This is an interesting set, I don't think it's ever in the movies, it might be in the comics, but let's take a closer look at it. Taking a first look at the set, you can see the size of the set compared to the minifigures. It is the relative size of a Hulkbuster Lego set. I can see it includes four minifigures, one of them being War Machine, the other two being Outriders, and one of them being Ant-Man. Let's take a closer look at this set's play features. Starting off, you can open this set up and put a minifigure inside if you pull these both down. And then you just slide your War Machine minifigure right here. And then you fold this down and that up. And then he's contained in here. Kind of a weird name for this set, which is the War Machine Buster, when that's usually like a term you hear for the Hulk Buster, which is sort of like a containment chamber. But in this set, it's sign of kind of just a mech for War Machine, which is pretty interesting. This set is also very poseable. The arms can spin like this. And it also has some joints here that let these arms move, although it looks a little funky because the way the armor is designed, there's just a big gap here. So I guess the best way to keep them is kind of like this to kind of hide that gap. I wanted to make a separate segment to talk about the leg posability because it's a lot different than the arm posability and it's super weird. I have no idea why Lego decided to design the legs like this. They fold like this outwards instead of kind of the moving up and down. I mean, you can move them up and down, but they fold out, which is so strange. I don't know why this is a feature. I don't really know what the other movement could really be. I mean, yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't know why LEGO included this, because you can get some really weird positions like this. <laughs> it's like a football player position, and you can have his legs backwards. I don't really know why LEGO decided to design the legs like this, but it, it works, I guess. It looks a little funky from the side. It always looks like he's in a permanent sit, but it does give you some range of motion with moving them up and down to kind of make it look like he's walking. And you can also move the feet on a ball joint, so you can have those move as well. So you can get some good posability with this set, although it is a very strange amount of posability. You can also move the fingers as well if you wanted to. Not only does this set have great posability, it also has some great weapons included with it. One of them being this machine gun atop its head, which you can kind of swivel and move like this and point down. It has some good posability, and then you just twist this thing in the back, and if you hold on to it, it goes firing everywhere. Pretty exciting, although you're going to lose a lot of studs if you actually use that. And then over here we have the flick fire missiles, which has the same posability. I don't think it can move down, but it can move up. And then you flick. Ow, ow, ow. Man, flicking these really hurts. If I could just get it to work. There we go. It kind of worked. I would never recommend using these flick fire missiles. They suck. Flick fire missiles are awful, but... It is a nice inclusion and it does add some extra detail and extra weapons. And then you also do have some stud shooters on his hands, which are actually from the War Machine minifigure, which we will get to eventually, but you just press right here and they go launching off. And the same thing for the other side as well. If you spent all your ammo launching the studs at the wall, however, the set does include some extra ammo inside of the mech. It really is a mech. This is really just a mech set, now I'm figuring it out. It's not a buster or anything else, it's just a mech. A really oversized mech. In the back here there is some extra studs on this piece and they do fit in there rather nicely. There's a spot for them. And then you can take these out and load them into the minigun or the hand stud shooters. Very nice inclusion there. They actually use the space really nicely and when you can even put the War Machine minifigure in there like I showed before and he won't get in the way. Taking a look at minifigures in the set, starting off we have War Machine or Admiral Rhodes. I think that is his name in the Marvel movies. It might be another rank of command, but I know his name is Rhodey. And he looks really good. He does have this Avengers suit though, which is kind of a big problem with these, I guess, endgame set minifigures. Is that all of them have the same Avengers suit. Like I'll bring out Ant-Man right here. You can see he has the exact same suit. And it can be kind of annoying because it takes away how exclusive they are, which can be pretty annoying because then the minifigure value goes down. But... He has a really good minifigure besides that. He has a really nice helmet piece with the black at the back and then the silver. And you can lift it up and you can see that unlike, I think it's Tony Stark's inside helmet design, this is the red design. Like his has Jarvis and it's blue. This one has like the sort of red computer design for his head. And in the back, he has a normal face, which is pretty nice. You could have it open up like that. Something pretty cool about the set you might have not noticed is that the guns that he had on his back and in his hand 
actually came from the hands of the mech or buster or whatever you want to call it. They come off of the sides of the hands and then you can take them off and can put them on his backpack. So there's a clip on his backpack, pretty nice backpack design, although it is not really anything special. It does the job. And then you can slick the other one in his hand. Then you have the ultimate war machine with lots of cannons. Really nice use of parts there. I guess it could be Lego being cheap, but I think it's really ingenious. Next up, taking a look at the Outriders. In my last video, I called them Chitaru, which was the Iron Man Hall of Armor review. And they are really similar to Chitaru, but these are Outriders. And these are in Infinity War. They're the species that run when Wakanda is in that shield. They're the species that attacks them there. And like I mentioned in my last video, these guys are really annoying how they were in like every single set from that year. But we do get I guess this guy is an exclusive. He has the nice arms on the back and I guess the nice printing, but you've probably seen him before. We do get, I think this guy might be exclusive to this set. This might be like an Outrider General or something, or he just has special gold claws and this side spike piece around his neck. Don't really know what that's about, but none of the printing is different. He just does include some gold claws, which are really nice actually. And yeah, that, that weird spike thing. The final minute here in the set is Ant-Man and he of course does have that same Avenger suit, which honestly really sucks. I'd much rather get these characters in their actual outfits, although this is more accurate to the movies, like <laughs> probably the only thing that's actually accurate to the movies in this set. Like I said before, they didn't want to give anything away about Endgame before it came out because these sets, as usual, these Lego sets came out before the movie they were actually based on, but I think he would be a lot better with an actual suit. But as you can see, he has a nice helmet print. I think it might be a new mold. I don't really like it. I think it looks oversized and a little bit funky. It has a good print though, like I said, and you can also take it off and replace it with some hair, which is really nice. They didn't do this for Rhodey, but I think that's probably because he doesn't really have any hair. But there you can kind of see it is just a basic minifigure hair piece, but I think it's really accurate and is a nice throw in for the set. He also does include a double sided face, which we'll look at really quickly. It's him being scared, which actually is pretty accurate to what we see in the movie. He seems to be scared a lot or he does show a lot of expression. So that's pretty nice. Taking a look at stickers and prints, there are a lot of stickers in this set. We'll start off with the one big print, which is really nice, which is this helmet piece in the front. Looks a little funky with it not being printed in the back, but I love how LEGO actually printed this. Sticker for this would not be fun, but I think these are both stickered and these are both stickered down here. These are stickers as well, sticker. There's a lot of gray stickers in the set, which is very annoying. There's a sticker there. I'm sure I'm missing a couple, like there's some stickers there, but you probably get the point. There's a lot of, yeah, more stickers, gray stickers. A lot of dark gray stickers on this set. So yeah, I think this might be the only print in the entire set. Now time to talk price per piece or value for money. So when the set came out in 2019, it retailed for $34.99 or $35, which kind of a strange price. I would have expected Lego to go for $30 with this. I feel like just looking at it, it kind of feels like a $30 set. Although it does come with four minifigures, which could make it $40. Although it did come with 362 pieces. So that is around 10 cents per piece. It's actually a little bit better. There are some bigger pieces in the set, but there are, all, there are also like probably 20 studs in the set with all the stud shooters and stuff. But overall, I'd say it's actually probably not the best value for money because I feel like there's a lot of stickers. There's one print and the minifigures aren't that exclusive. Like the two that are exclusive, I guess, well, exclusive in quotes are just in those Avengers suits, which aren't exclusive at all. The only thing exclusive, I think, is their maybe their helmets. And the two Outriders, or Chitaru, I think they're Outriders. They're very similar to Chitaru. They are never exclusive. I mean, the Gold Claws guy is nice, but other than that, they're just the same prints and pieces we've had before. So overall, I'd say this isn't a great value for money. I'd say if it was $30, it'd probably be a lot better, but 35 seems like you're pushing it a little bit. The set gets a 0 out of 10 for accuracy. Actually, a 1 out of 10, because the Avengers characters are sort of accurate to what they look like in Endgame, but this... Mm -hmm. This thing never happened. So overall, I feel like this set is a six out of 10. There's really like, it's it's still good. I feel like the design is pretty good. Maybe not, like some of the arm joints and the gaps on these, like especially the weird standing stance for this mech, basically. They aren't the best, but I still feel like it is a cool looking build. Like it actually looks pretty good. Although a lot of it is with stickers, which is a problem. So I feel like it's a six out of 10 because there's just way too many stickers and the minifigures really aren't that great if you just look at ex exclusivity. Oh my gosh, that word is ridiculous, but they're not very exclusive. 
Although I do like some of them, like the Ant-Man minifigure, even though I think the helmet looks a little funky, and the War Machine minifigure, they are great to have if you're collecting the Avengers guys from Endgame, I guess. But overall, I feel like the set is a 6 out of 10. So there you have it, guys. That was my review of set number 76124, the War Machine Buster, or the War Machine Mech. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.